As lovers of the countryside, we like the idea of existing in harmony with our environment, living sustainably, just leaving footprints and, of course, trying to recycle. In Roy's case, he's making good use of a fox he shot last night. Waste not, want not. This is part of his master plan to increase his chances of shooting some crows. One thing that used to be done when calling corvids in was to put a live decoy out. A lot of old keepers used to put out a ferret. Some even went to the, uh, the extent of having a, an eagle out and they'd and put it out in the field and then the crows would come in to mob it. And that's what they did with the, uh, the ferret as well. So as I haven't got um, an owl decoy and uh, obviously we wouldn't go to the extent of, uh, of using a, uh, a live owl now, um, what we're gonna do is just put the fox out and just see if the, the crows come in and mob it. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set the fox up just out here on this side of us because then if the crows come over and they're on the flight line, then they might just pick up the fox, just come round and give us a chance for a, uh, a couple of shots. So that's the plan. Whether or not it works is a different matter. For the crows that don't fancy having a go at the vixen, Roy has a few other decoys he's nicked off Andy. He's going to have to work with these until he gets some birds on the ground. We're not in the, the position that I'd really like to be in, um, but all we can do is just uh, set this up and see what sort of results we get. I'm sure Andy would be pulling his hair out seeing what I'm about to do, but never mind. Finally, we're ready to go and Roy dons a face mask, an essential bit of kit when tackling crows. Corvids are notoriously cunning. Roy manages to get onto a few with a couple of pigeons for good measure, then remembers that his mum has knitted him a face mask, so he'd better show willing so as not to hurt her feelings. No tittering at the back, please. We've probably got about a dozen birds on the ground so far and the fox is working. I've just got it in slightly the wrong position, I think, because you can hear the crows coming in and they're spotting it because they're calling. They say they're letting out a, an alarm call, um, just warning everybody, obviously, when they, they see something like that. And where they're coming in, the flight line is shifted a little bit, so they're just looking directly down at us, so they're not actually flaring over where we've got the hide. But I'm reluctant to move the fox at the moment because we've got another flight line developing over on the right-hand side, so we'll see how we do with that. All respect is now lost for Mr Lupton, apart from that, from his mother. Then he gets too hot and loses the mask, so even his mother hates him. However, the good news is that the fox is working well, especially with the addition of a pretend kill. Unfortunately, the mobbing crows are lost behind the big hedge, which is useless for us. It's amazing how well that fox is working. I've moved it over to the hedgerow and the crows are coming up that line and circling it. Unfortunately, the hedge is a little bit too high because they're coming in quite... Oh. <laughs> Not again! <laughs> anyway! Let's try that again. Yeah, let's! <laughs> Oh. oh dear, Roy. Before we get done for cyber bullying, we'd better move on. As our resident bird expert, why not show us the difference between the birds? With the rook, we've got a, a very bald face, so there's no feathering on the, the top of his sear here or on his wattle down here, so under his beak here. Um, and the main reason is the, the rooks do a lot of grubbing about and worming around in the fields. So it's almost a, a vulturine adaption, whereas vultures have got a, a, a bare face, um, just a, a skin face. Um, the rooks are very similar. It's just to obviously keep them clean when they're, they're rooting about in the mud. Whereas if you look, obviously, at the crow's face, then we're very different. So he's got a uh, he's got feathering coming down over his ear and over his nasal openings in there. Um, I think much more handsome bird, but. Uh, so those are the, the two major differences between rooks and crows. We've had an OK few hours. It's not a massive bag, but again, it's not always about that. The farmer will be happy that Roy's there, keeping the crows on their toes.